What's going on YouTube? So recently I've been asked um, numerous times uh, to do a how-to series on how I do um, some of my tube chassis builds like the Pro Mods or the, the Pro Stock Door Slammer style um, or the uh, Rock Balancer that you may have seen in one of my way long time ago videos. Um, so this is going to be kind of an intro to a series that I plan on doing. Um, I've actually kind of gotten away from models for quite a while but I'm just recently getting back into it so I figured why not take the opportunity to uh, help some of you guys out and uh, also give myself a good refresher on um, doing some of this scratch building style model building um, so without any further ado let me get you guys turned around and uh, we'll start off with a little bit of introduction and uh, how I go about planning and things like that for a build of this nature alright so some of the basic tools that I use um, when I do these style builds is obviously I like to have some type of square um, These two pieces are actually just a, a speed square But I find this quite handy because it's got a nice squared edge and it's got a tall flat surface that I can push parts up against um, To keep square and then also glue at the same time Obviously you're going to need a good hobby knife um, a ruler uh, at least up to 12 inches because what you're going to be using is styrene that's uh, I use the 14 inch evergreen stuff um, and we'll get into that here in just a minute, but um, the glue of my choice is a, a gap filling medium sole, medium hold uh, instant cure uh, glue. Um, it works quite well. It it's not quite um, as fast as I would prefer. I know you can use an accelerant or whatever you guys choose to use, um, but it gives you a little bit of wiggle room if you find out that there's a there's a part that you don't want quite there. Um, the other big one is a pair of pliers. Um, you're going to do a lot of bending um, of tube or rod uh, in a build like this, so a pair of pliers is definitely a handy tool. And then one that most people don't think about, um, baking soda. Uh, I, I just spoke about the accelerant. Some a lot of guys don't think about is baking soda. Um, its main purpose is to extract moisture out of whatever it is you're, you're using and so what you can do is you could use just a little bit of the baking soda when you put your glue on and that's going to suck all the moisture out and all you're left with is the actual bonding agent in the glue. Um, the only thing you want to be careful with when you use this is less is more. Um, if you guys have used baking soda at all obviously you would know that it will dry things out in a hurry. So that's one option or you can just use something like this. Um, this is a 5 to 15 second cure time. Um, you can use a little bit of airflow just blowing on it or a little hot air also helps I found um, but the biggest thing uh, in your build is gonna be your styrene um, in this particular build I'm running with the part number 213 um, 0.100 inch rod 2.5 millimeter um, by evergreen uh, the reason being now this is not going to be the color it's staying, but this is the 1 16th scale Dukes of Hazard Dodge Charger. Um, when you guys start a project like this, you need to know what scale you're building in. Um, and I'll leave a link to the converter, uh, the scale converter site that I use. Um, it's actually extremely handy on figuring out your measurements, your lengths, and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, you can scale up, you can scale down. Um, but knowing what you're using. So most of your NHRA chassis are going to be one and a half inch DOT tubing. Um, so if you scale that down to 16th scale, it's going to be roughly 332nd, which is a 0 0.09735. I could have that a little backwards, but the closest thing you're going to find is this 0.100. So I opted to run with this. It's just a hair oversized, but that's all right. Nobody's going to see the difference. Um, if you're doing a 24 scale, like you guys have seen me do with the with the head rush, you're going to want to use a 16th inch. If you're doing larger, like say a 12th scale, you're going to want to run a um, an eighth of an inch uh, styrene rod, which is quite a bit bigger than this. Actually, it's uh, almost a full millimeter larger. Um, so with that being said um, let me clear this off oh the last thing you want to have a good solid flat surface um, 
mainly because when you're gluing down especially your your platform for your your fuselage where your driver would sit you want it to be flat you want it to be square this is gridded on the other side it's a nice hobby co 12 by 14 mat um, and i have used the ever living snot out of this it's actually about time to get a new one um, so i'm just using this other side because it's clean and uh you can actually see what i'm doing so let me uh set the camera up and then uh let's uh let's start working on getting a, a frame set up all right so i've got a couple pieces of styrene cut um i've actually got four pieces cut here um two matching lengths of each length um, and what I did if any of you guys have built this kit before you know that the kit comes with an absolutely terrible roll cage um, I, I shouldn't say terrible because it's got actually a lot of good references and that's another thing you guys want to take into consideration reference 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 um, there's a lot of good videos out on YouTube um, that you can look at or images on Google as far as a design you want to base your build off of. Um, so what I did is I measured, I, I looked at where the, the, the cage lined up inside the car and it actually lines up quite well with where um, it really should be according to an NHRA style cage. So I took a measurement from uh, outside of this front A pillar to the back of this B pillar and it happened to be right about three and a quarter inches. So uh, that is this guy here that's going to be running right along the inside of your rocker panel. And then I measured from the back uh, across the back here on the inside. Um, and the reason I did the inside is because your rocker bars are going to be running along the inside of your rocker panels and you want this bar to be on the inside. So your outside one is going to be the outside so you have to keep Keep that in mind that whatever you're putting on the outside, this length has to stay inside those two bars. So this one actually came out to be about nine and three six, uh, no, sorry, not nine, three and nine sixteenths. Um, so that's what you see here. So this is gonna be your rocker bar, and then that's gonna be your cross piece. Now there's a few different ways that I can go about doing this. I have, like I said, I have a couple pieces of each length cut. Um, you can either do a complete square and then run forward. Oops. Um, nothing's glued yet just because I want to make sure which route I want to go um, but what you can do is you can make a complete square and then run two forward bars forward um, or you can do a, a three-quarter square so you just do your outer rockers and then a rear and then run find about center and then split that like I did in the head rush Camaro and then run two forward bars so I think what I'm going to probably end up doing is something along those lines. I'm not going to do a complete square. Um, what I'll do is I'll do a three-quarter square frame and then split the fine dead center in that frame. And then say I want to go just as wide as these motor mounts. I think is about as wide as I want to go. So I'm going to find out how wide these motor mounts are because I am going to be using um, this guy. This is the motor from the kit. Um, with a intake and supercharger from a guy that sent it to me years ago um, off Facebook. Uh, so this is a blown 426. Um, it's going to get a little, quite a bit more detail. Um, but I don't want to go too much wider than what I need to. Um, I don't want it to be super bulky like this is, but I don't want it to be so tight that I can't get the motor in there. So that's another thing you guys got to keep in mind. The headers on this are going to be coming off. I'm going to fabricate my own set that are going to come out the front quarter panels. Um, so keep in mind how everything's going to wrap together. Is it going to flow with your motor? Or are you going to have to do a couple bends around your motor and then build your own brackets? Um, it, it's going to be kind of a, a, a guessing game for a little bit until you actually know exactly how you want it to go. So um, like I said, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to basically build a three quarter frame and run two forward bars and then it's only going to come out as long as these two frame rails are here and it's only going to be as wide as the two motor mounts that way the motor can just drop right down on top and then I'll figure out what I want to do as far as top bars and then everything else so um, let me get uh, some framework glued up and then I will be right back with you guys all right guys so um, I've got the three-quarter uh, floor pan started um, these guys are glued and currently curing um, and then I ran the two forward bars. You can th see I threw a little bit of an angle in there. Um, this is dead nut center. Um, I want to say it's 
an inch and 23 30 seconds um, to the center and then I ran three quarters of an inch um, I was gonna just run straight um, inch and a quarter like the width is out here uh, for the motor but it only gave me roughly a little under inch and a quarter on either side and that's not a whole lot of room so I figure I can taper it in because that's where your feet would go um, and then I'll just throw the pedals up there so I'm gonna let this cure um, make sure it's good and dry before I start messing with it too much um, and then uh, by the next time you guys see this um, I'll have the front bars connected and then maybe throw in some bracing if I do that I'll kind of go over what I did um, and then uh, we will start working on the rear main loop I think to do that just because of the way this one sits it's actually up to height where I need it I can kind of mimic um, this this uh, rear main hoop in measurement wise and then I'm going to be changing a lot of this main halo hoop as far as how far out it comes and then we'll work on doing some a pillars and then building forward um, so with that being said um, hopefully some of this uh, helped you guys if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them below and I'll do what I can to answer them and uh, until then I will talk to you guys later <laughs>